Welcome back for Psalm 39, uh, somewhat of a strong continuation from Psalm 38 uh, as David contemplates his sin and his guilt. Uh, his thoughts turn ultimately to what's the ultimate result of sin in this world? Death. And because he's having all these thoughts uh, about his impending death, uh, he's, he wants to talk to God about it. It's interesting that at the start of the psalm, he's not going to open his mouth in front of the wicked about this. And how often uh, doesn't the unbelieving world and wicked world use the doubts that uh, Christians may express from time to time as uh, an excuse for their unbelief or as an opportunity to encourage them into unbelief. Um, and so the Christian is wise with some things, some questions to uh Keep it between you and the Lord or to take it to those who are spiritually mature enough to handle them uh, and to handle them with God's word. And as we maybe have our own thoughts and struggles about death as we consider uh, our own mortality, this psalm uh, is very helpful. Uh, it turns at verse 4 as David now opens his mouth to talk about this with God. And he's like, Show me what it's all about, Lord. Show me, you know, why my life is so short. Uh, and then he recognizes that. What do I look for? You know, what's the point? Uh, you know, you know, what's what's my goal in this life if it's just a, a mere phantom, a mere hand breath, uh, as he describes it, uh, in in terms of length. Uh, the goal is that I turn to Christ, that I turn to Him for forgiveness, and then we we dwell with the Lord. Uh, we ask him to look away from us that we may rejoice again. Uh, as David says, that look away from me that I may rejoice. David's been in Psalm 38 and Psalm 39 feeling the effects of the Lord's discipline. Uh, and so when he says, look away from me, Lord, he's asking the Lord, please, please finish this discipline soon that I may rejoice now in your forgiveness and in the correction that you have given so let's get into it. Uh, this brief Psalm 39, as David contemplates uh, his impending death. I said, I will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth as long as the wicked are in my presence. But when I was silent and still, not even saying anything good, my anguish increased. My heart grew hot within me. And as I meditated, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Show me, O Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting is my life. You have made my days a mere handbreadth. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath. Man is a mere phantom as he goes to and fro. He bustles about, but only in vain. He heaps up wealth, not knowing who will get it. But now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. Save me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of fools. I was silent. I would not open my mouth, for you are the one who has done this. Remove your scourge from me. I am overcome by the blow of your hand. You rebuke and discipline men for their sin. You consume their wealth like a moth. Each man is but a breath. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for help. Be not deaf to my weeping, for I dwell with you as an alien, a stranger, as all my fathers were. Look away from me, that I may rejoice again, before I depart and am no more. Uh, one closing thought is, is simply uh, David's expression. When I was silent and still, not saying anything, my anguish, anguish increased. So uh, how often can't we... Uh, empathize with that, sympathize with that. Uh, we try to hold our tongue and it just starts to boil up over and over. Uh, the less we speak, the more we have to say. And uh, just the important reminder then, when, when that's the case, uh, if we need to pour our heart out, let's pour it out to God uh, or pour it out to someone uh, who is spiritually mature enough to help us and, and to listen to and perhaps even answer uh, our thoughts with uh, with the right words from God. That's all I have on Psalm 39. As usual, hopefully I'll see you again for our next Psalm, Psalm 40.